So at 7 o'clock, uh, we'll look at getting started now. So thank you for joining us this morning. Um, today we're going to be looking at uh, getting organised with the platform um, and we'll have a look at some of the different options to help you keep organised. Um, and then also, it won't just be death by PowerPoint, we will get into the platform as well so you can see how it actually works in practice. So first of all, this is what we'll be having a look at today. So uh, we'll be going through tasks, uh, notes, workflows and dashboards. So whilst this webinar is mainly going to revolve around the tasks and notes function, workflows and dashboards links in really, really nicely. So we'll kind of touch on those and see how you can use those um, alongside the tasks and the note function. So we'll start off with tasks. So tasks are there to be used for individuals or you can set them for a team. So you can map them to many different things within the platform. So some examples there are opportunities, courses, users, accounts, and it's just being able to manage those within one central place um, and see at a glance what you've got to do for a course um, or even an invoice being processed. So it's keeping all that within one place within the platform. Um, you can see at the top right here, we've got a little picture of what a task looks like. So you, you've got that accessible there within the platform. Um, and it's really easy to get to. So people can access those tasks really easily when they've been set up and see what they've got to do. So task types and statuses can use custom list items to set those per platform. So if you want to make sure that tasks and the wording within your tasks and those actions are linked to your business and your business processes and your the language that you use, you can use the custom list items to, um, to basically set those and make sure that they're, they're as personal to you as possible. Um, we also recommend that you set these up prior to starting to make any tasks. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier for you if you set those up at the very, very beginning. Um, and then you'd have to go in and change them all um, if you if you change them later on. Uh, some of the common uses for these are activities, uh, calls and meetings, uh, pre-course work, post-course work. So these are some of the most common ones that we see within tasks, but obviously you can create whatever you want. So the next um, one of the opportunity, one of the tasks that you can set up is for an opportunity. So we use this as an example. Um, so this is what the window will look like when you get a uh, a task. So here, this is the window that will pop up to create that task. So the first thing we'll look at is the subject. So here, this is what is the what is the task going to be? Uh, it's a short label of what you want that title to be. We then map it to something. Every task has to be mapped to something in the platform. So that that's a course or an opportunity, like in this example. And you can use this select option here. Um, to be able to pick up a list of, of options within the platform so you don't have to do it blind. You then have to assign it to an account at least. So here we're using this Agility RS example. Uh, and then a user. Uh, don't have to assign it to a user. It can be assigned to an account. But if you want an individual person to own that task, that's where you'll assign it to them there. Uh, and then the schedule. So this last bit is where you're going to set your start and your due date. These aren't compulsory, but for tasks, they usually have an end date, um, so we'd always recommend at least putting the due date in. That's going to help you with any future filtering, any future um, reports of what tasks are due to be completed. And then here, this is where we can set the custom lists. So here we've got it set to activity. But if in the platform, if we click this, this will give us all the custom lists that you've set up for your, uh, for your platform. Uh, and then priority is mandatory. So this is just setting how important it is for you, again, for reporting purposes. Another example, so using the tasks for course templates. So you can assign a task to a course template, and that would mean that every single time you schedule a course date off that template, that task is automatically going to be created. So it's automatically going to be inherited by the course. So if you have to do the same thing every single course date, put it on the course template, you create it once, and it's always then going to pull down to those course dates that you schedule from that template. Um, for best practice, we do say that not to create tasks for activities that don't need a reminder. Your ta If you don't need a reminder for it, your task list is going to appear very overwhelming, um, hard to maintain, and ultimately it's not going to be used by the training admin for the new business. So this um, is what it looks like within the platform. So as I mentioned, these are tasks that you need to do every single course. So you can assign these to the uh, course template, and then every single time these courses will these are tasks, sorry, will then create on that course date that you create. 
So you can also create them per course date. So if they are individual to a course date that you need to um, have a task just for that singular course, um, tasks can inherit from the course template or they can be created specifically for that course, such as issuing certificates or changing the venue as a course specific task as flooding happened at the original venue. So you need to set a task to change that venue for that course. So linking these into workflows, Tasks can be defined and created by using the workflow engine within the platform. So some examples of this are when an opportunity is just three days away from an expected close date, we then create a task for an admin to follow up that, uh, that opportunity. Or another, uh, another example is when an invoice is overdue, um, we can then create a task for an admin to contact the customer. So depending on how many days this is overdue, you can then have a task set to remind that admin to contact the person to remind them that it's overdue. So this is what it looks like within the workflow um, engine when you create a workflow. So at the top here, um, like many workflows, um, we you can choose when the task would be created. So this one would be for um, an opportunity, for example. So three days before the closing date, we then choose the um, account and who's creating it. Um, map to, so what is going to cause this to create, which is going to be, in this instance, a trigger object. Um, we can set the priority and the progress. So if you've already started this, you can set the progress to be, say, 50%, but in this case, it's zero. Set the status, set the subject of what the task is. You're going to pick your type. So again, it's going back to just creating that task. So here you'd have your custom list items. Uh, and then also we're going to set the start and uh, the due date and the start date. Again, we can use these um, functions to be able to, to base it off the closing date in this example. And then at the bottom, who we're going to assign it to, and this one's going to be assigned to Henry. We'll jump more into this when we get into the platform, because uh, workflows can be a bit complicated. Uh, but if you do have any questions, the Q&A box is open, so please feel free to pop them in there if you do have anything as we go along. So that's tasks covered. Um, as I say, we'll look more at, how, at practically how it works in the platform shortly. Um, we'll go over notes, and then we'll get into the platform. So notes is another underused function within the platform. Um, it's a great way to provide more information, document changes, any ideas, any notes about a delegate or a course that you want to place on uh, into the platform, you can use it for that. It's a quick way of, of basically being able to log those, those thoughts, those notes, um, and any training admin can then pick up within the platform. So it's a powerful way of just centralizing everything, all your operations, it's all in one place within the platform as opposed to having it in different places, for example. Hopefully then in the future, um, either you or another trained admin can rely on those notes to make better decisions in the future as well. So uh, within the platform, notes can be added against all these different options. So some of the most popular ones are courses and delegates. So if you want to make a note about how a course went or how a delegate was on the course, or if a delegate was late, for example, that's really good examples um, of how these are used. Um, but it's quite wide ranging and you can um, add them to anything there that's displayed. So this is how a note looks uh, within the platform. So what's the note map to? So in this case, it's going to be to a course, but there's lots of different options. So here, again, you can use this select option here. Uh, and that's going to give you a list of all the courses. So you can choose that course from, from the available options. You don't have to remember the specific name of a course, for example. Um, the next one is the note type. So here again, just a, a quick drop down here. You can choose which, what type of note it is. And there's different options which we'll look at in the platform. Uh, then the actual note, what is the note that you want to do? This is a full HTML box. Um, so you've got all your formatting options. And you can make that as, as nice looking or as simple looking as you want. Um, and then the last option at the bottom here is um, for relates to courses only. So it's if you want your trainers to see this note, you can tick that option. And then when they go to the course, they'll see that option there for them to view. As I said, this is only for courses that they have this option for. Um, and it, it gives you a choice per note then as opposed to being a blanket option. So if you want to make a note about a trainer against a course, or you've got a lot of feedback about that trainer that is maybe not always positive, you can hide that from them so they don't see that note in particular. So again, you can use workflows to come in notes. So workflows are used for communications externally, but a lot of people don't necessarily know that you can also use them for internal uses. So you can use them to create for tasks, as we've already gone through. Uh, it can be used for reminders for internal teams. And then we'll move on to dashboards quickly. So dashboards, again, we have a whole other webinar and fundamentals class about these. Um, so we're just going to touch on it just to give you an idea of what we can do. So dashboards, if you don't know, can be created for admins or managers within your platform. They're a great way for when you log into the platform um, as, a, as a glance of what you've got to do for the day, your upcoming week, 
uh, give you financial information. They're very, very powerful. Um, so they're really good to set up and give you ad- as admins um, that quick, easy access glance of what's going on within your training organization. Um, they can be used for individuals, so you can create your own, or you can make one for your whole team and share that amongst your team. They all have access to that same information. Uh, users can also see multiple dashboards, so you don't have to have just one. You can have as many as you like if you're assigned to them. Uh, and they're a great way, as I mentioned, to give a high-level overview of what's going on within the platform. We'll go more into dashboards, how they look, what you can do with those, and how that links to um, tasks especially is the, is the main use I want to show you today. So we'll jump in the platform now, um, and we'll have um, a look around at what we can do. So this is uh, one of our test platforms. So here you can see this is the first look when you log in. So you've got the, the dashboard straight away. So this is one example that we've got. So we'll start with the dashboard since we're already here. So um, we won't go into too much of information about these today, but these are just a different type of gadget that we've got. So these are telling me how many delegates we've got in the next five, uh, next 14 days and how many courses we've got running within the next 30 days. So these are some really good snippets to be able to get that information really quickly at the as soon as you log in, you can see exactly what you've got there. You come in on a Monday morning, you need to know how many courses we've got running in the next in the next week, um, and you can get that information right there. And if you wanted to, you could have that in a more granular format down here using a, one of these gadgets. So this is called a statistic gadget, and the one I want to show you today really uh, has linking with tasks is this data grid gadget. So this is basically um, a smaller version of any data grid, so something that you see within the users menu, within the accounts menu. It's just a smaller version, basically. So um, here we've got this task, this this gadget set up to show tasks that are happening within the next seven days. So this is anything that's assigned to me um, that is due has a due date within the next seven days. So these headers can all be um, changed within the settings. Um, so you can, if you didn't want date created, you weren't bothered when the actual uh, task was created. You can remove that column altogether. So here I've got one for check profitability. I can see I haven't started that task yet. That's due on the 15th of November. It's assigned to me and it links to this course here. So I can see that for this English GCSE course that we're running, uh, I need to set the profitability of that by the 15th of November. Um, to be able to, this just gives you an overview of those tasks. If you want to edit or change anything about them, you just click open the full data grid mm -hmm. and it's going to take you straight to that data grid with the filters already on there. So you don't have to filter it again. So here I can see exactly what we saw in the overview on the, on the dashboard. But here now I can edit those. So I'm going to this check profitability one and it's going to give me um, all the information. And here I can make those changes. So here um, I can say that I've now started this. So this is now in progress uh, and I've done 20% of that task. So I've already started looking at the figures. And then here, if I just want to take any notes, um, I can put zero delegate support as of 9-11. No profitability recorded for example, and then you can just press save and that updates that task. So you can see now it's changed in progress. It's changed to that different label. And then if I wanted to just um, update it, I just right click edit. And again, it will bring up the, uh, the task and you can just change it again from status to completed. So I've now done that and that's 100% complete. And you can see then you've got the status of completed. So that's how dashboards can come in really handy. Um, if we just go back to that dashboard view, you can exactly see now um, what is how how useful this could be to someone. This is how they can quickly see the tasks that are due within the next seven days, fourteen days, thirty days, whatever you wanted to set it as. Um, you could you could set that. And if we also only wanted to show tasks that weren't anything that wasn't completed, we can also add in more filters to take out things that are completed. So if we just wanted to see the tasks that weren't complete and I still had to do, we can edit those. So they're really, really flexible. If you're interested in more of the um, dashboards, we definitely recommend coming along to either one of the fundamentals or the webinars to give you a, an overview um, as we can really help you get those set up. Um, and they're a really good way to get that information. So we'll jump in now to the tasks first. So on the left-hand side, we've got this tasks um, option on the menu. So if we click into that, we've got this then long data grid list. So I've got this one, I'm just going to off. So we've got a long list of all the tasks that are in the platform assigned to me or anyone within the platform. So there's a lot of lists, a lot of tasks for me, um, but anyone here within your platform um, who has the tasks assigned to them will have, will, will show here. So you can filter the dashboard data grid like any other data grid. You can use your filters. Um, but the really nice thing about tasks is we have this option in the top right called switch to board. By clicking that, we get a different view totally from the data grid. So here you can see all the different reasons that you've got 
and where each task is. So each one is color coordinated too, as you can see. So for not starting, we've got red. So here I've got a post out of product as a, as a task. Um, I can click that and it's going to give me the information of the task details in particular. So I can see directly from this board exactly what that task is. And I'm like, oh yeah, I remember I've done that already. Um, I've already got that ready to go. It's in its envelope. I'm now going to move that to in progress. So now I can see, right, I've already, I've in effect got that product, whatever it may be, and I've popped it into the envelope ready to go. I just need to go to the post office and send it. So I'm going to move it to in progress. And then when you've done it, you would in effect just move it along to completed. So now I've taken that envelope. I've gone to the post office and posted it. I can now put it into completed. So this is updating the, the status of that task as you move it along these different um, categories. And as I mentioned before, all your different ones that you've got, if you add in any custom ones, also will display in here. So it's just really easy to drag and drop them along um, into these different statuses. And what's also really nice about this view is that this is just my tasks. So if I have Jenna, who has 20 tasks within this platform, she uh, I won't see any of hers on this board. These are just the tasks that I have to do. So it's a really nice way to quickly see um, just what you've got to do and where each task is up to. Um, and then you can also add tasks from here too by just literally clicking the Add button. So this is exactly the same as if you're in the data grid view. So um, whether we're in the data grid or in the Kanban board, you can click add and this is how you can set up a new task manually. So here we're literally just gonna type in the um, the subject. So this is follow up uh, course survey we'll do for this one. And then here, this is what it's mapped to. So you can map it to an account, course, these are all the different options that we mentioned before. So this one is gonna do, uh, I'm gonna link it to a certain course because I wanna follow up the course survey. And then I'm gonna click the select button and this gives me a list of all the courses um, that I can assign this task to. So you can also use your filters um, as with all of these pop-ups. So I know that I want it for this English GCSE course. So this course is going to be on the 21st of November at nine o'clock. So I'm going to click OK, because that's the course I want to follow up on. Uh, the account that I'm going to assign it to. So this is going to be any of your accounts in the platform. So we just have uh, the Access Planet account. So that's what it's going to be for. And then it's for me. And it's an activity. So here we've got all the different options. But actually, because we've got uh, we've got pre-course activity, this is actually going to be a follow-up. Uh, for me, this is a real uh, high priority. So it'll be a number one priority. Um, and the course start date here, we can see, was the 21st of November. So I'm going to change that start date to the 22nd of November. And the due date is also going to be the 22nd. So I'm starting this on the 22nd, and it's due on the 22nd. So I have to do this task on that day. And the date is currently not started. Um, and for my description is follow-up course, survey results, and distribute. This is what I'm going to set. Um, you can also then click set to remind by email. So if I click that button and then a date, so I'm going to set it to remind me on the 22nd in the morning at nine o'clock. So as soon as I get in, I'm going to have an email in my inbox as well as the task. It's then going to send me an email to my account, to this person's account, um, to remind them that this is due. So I press save and close. And that task is now complete and it will it'll be in this long list of uh, tasks that I have to do. Um, and then that's going to send me the reminder and then it will appear either in the data grid in the board or also in the task list. So this is another place that you can view a task. There's three different places, really, four if you include dashboards. And the top right tasks, I can see here, these are all my tasks that uh, I've, I've got. These are the first ones that are due. I can see the chase payment is 20% due. And then if I click see all, it's just going to take me to this dashboard. Uh, sorry, to the data grid. So that's tasks. Um, it's a really good feature to use. And this one's kind of underused by um, a lot of, of customers. And they don't really know it's there or how it can be used. So it's a really good one that you to, to bring those tasks in the platform and make your admins more accountable and let them know exactly what they've got to do. Um, it makes it easier to have it. So having loads of sticky notes all over the place. Um, it's all within the platform. So we'll move on to notes. So notes also has a section in the left-hand navigation bar. So we're just going to click notes. And um, as in task, this is just a massive list of every note that's been created in the platform. So if you wanted to filter these out and um, you wanted to see who's created tasks, uh, who's created the, the note, who it's mapped to, um, what it's mapped to, you can use these fil you can use your filters um, as with any of the data grid to filter those results out here. This, as I say, is just a huge list of every single note that you've got within the platform. Um, you can map these to multiple different things. So I use this course as an example. So if I just go to a class course, the class course is data grid, and I'm going to use our English GCSE um, example again. 
So I'm going to right click. You can either go into edit or you can go straight to notes. You can also add a note straight from here. Um, so if I wanted to add a note, I can just click that. It's going to let me add a note straight away. If I want to see all the notes, I'm just going to click notes. And from here, I can see that we've got zero notes currently. And it would show me here any notes related to this course. To add a note against this course, I'm just going to click add note. And then you'll see it's already pre-mapped um, the course because I've already I've directly clicked add note from the course itself. And then I've got the different information that I want to provide. So I'm going to put that I get feedback in. Um, and I'm going to put Chris gave positive feedback about Joey the trainer, said it was the best course he has attended. So um, it's really nice feedback for our, about Joe. We want to know about Joe in the future. So we're going to put it on the course. But we also could assign it to the resource instead. But we're going to put it on the course for now. Trains can access this note. I'm happy for Joe to see this. So Joe's um, the trainer on this course. I'm going to click uh, Joe can access this note. And then I'll press save and close. And that is that note created. You'll see here then that I've been able to. Uh, this is just a list of all the notes. So if we had 20 notes, they'd all just list here. Um, this is the note that I've just created. Um, so that's one example, putting it on against a course. You can also do it against a resource. So if we go to the resources data grid and click manage. So we're going to get uh, this list of all the resources within our platform. Um, I'm going to add a note against the hub meeting room. So here you can see we've got no notes already. So another good use for these is um, you could put something like what equipment is available in the room. So if I want to know, so again, it's automatically mapped this note to this resource. And I'm going to put, um, it's just a quick note because we haven't got a certain category. Um, so I'm going to put available equipment. We have uh, a whiteboard, a projector, and 10 seats, three tables. Um, if you wanted to, you could put them as bullet points. You could change the font. So if I need to know when I'm looking at what I've got on, um, I'm just going to, be able to, I can see exactly what we've got. So if I need to, I'm looking at what rooms I need, I can use these notes to be able to see exactly what equipment's within that room. I'm gonna click save, and then there we go, that note is created. Um, if we have a look at the My Teaching Access, so just to have a quick look, um, your teachers can also see these notes. So as I said, so this is the, the courses. So if I was assigned to the trainer, I can right click, and also see the notes on this course. So I'm assigned to this first day course, which was in March this year. If I click notes, I can see any notes that were assigned to the course that I am allowed to see. So there could be 10 notes on this course, but I'm not. they're not shared with trainers. I can add one as a trainer um, if I wanted to for the future that I need to, um, something like 100% um, attendance. I know we mark it separately, but if I want to make a note about it, we can save that note. Um, and then if we went to this course, and edit, you can see that that note will appear here. It may take a few minutes to update. There we go. Perfect. It's pulled straight through. So that 100% attendance note that I've just created um, is right there. So that is how notes work. Um, obviously, there's a load of functions that you can use those notes with. Um, so it's worth having a look at what um, at what they can do um, and where you may be able to use those. Um, we'll just quickly jump into the workflows because I don't want to get too in depth um, in how a workflow works um, because it can be quite complicated if, you, if you're not 100%. But we're just going to set up a, a task workflow just for an example when we use the course dates. So if I wanted to set up a task, so we've got all the settings in the app. Um, pretend we've set this is a, a, a workflow that's already working. We can add a workflow action. So a lot of people know that these um, can be used for emails. What people don't know is that you can create notes or create tasks as well with these. So if I wanted to create a task, um, I can put a, so classic check profitability. We'll click save. And then from here, this is where we're going to set all the information. So um, I'm going to do it as a function. So if I want to create this task, um, five. I want to do it five days before start date. We can then assign it to the account, which is going to be Access Planet, the creator user. So I'm going to click select, and who the creator user is would be myself. What account is it mapped to? So you can what you can change what it's mapped to. So here I'm going to um, 
map it to the course. I also know straight away it's in that GCSE English course again. So if I search, it may not come up always. There we go. Perfect. So it's English GCSE. That's that course that I want on the 21st of November. I knew it was that exact one, so I'm not going to use the select option here. I'm just going to search for it by typing in and clicking from there. It's a priority one. It's the highest priority. Uh, I haven't started. It won't have been uh, progressed at that point. The status will be not started because it'll be a new task. You put in your subject. And then what type it is. So it's going to be a free course activity. Um, and then if you want, you can add more fields in. So I want to add in due date. So I'll just press this green arrow. That's going to add that in. And then you can change the, to the function again. So the due date for me is I want to check profitability one day before the start date of the course. So then when I press save, it will this workflow then when I set the action, this is what the action would be. Five days before the start date of the course, this will then create this task to check profitability and the due date will automatically set one date before the start date. So as I said, that can get a bit complicated. Um, if you do want any more help with how you can get these set up and how you may want to use them, drop us an email um, and we can help get a call booked in and go through that in a bit more detail. So as I say, it can be a bit complicated with, with setting the workflows up. So that is our platform demo for this morning. We um, So to recover what we've gone over, we've uh, looked at tasks and we've looked at notes. We looked at how the workflows can be used to create both tasks and notes automatically. Um, and also dashboards and how they can be used for tasks. So um, I mentioned some of the other events. So the dashboards that we have um, is a really good event if you want more information on dashboards and how to create them. Um, we've got fundamentals coming up on the 14th of November. That is a paid for event. It's £150 uh, per delegate. Um, if you're interested in attending that, that goes really, that's a two hour course um, with a QA, and a and that's gonna really go into detail about how um, you can create your dashboards, different types of gadgets, some real life examples of dashboards that you may want to use. Um, if you're interested in booking onto that, uh, drop us an email. Um, we'll give you the email at the end. Uh, another fundamentals in December is relating to invoices and financing. So this is a really popular topic. Um, it's going to give you more information on how the financing and invoicing works within the platform. We won't be looking at any integrations. Um, it's purely how this works within Access Planet. We have another webinar coming up on the 7th of December. So this is a new one. Uh, this is free, similar to this one. We'll be going through the administrator menu options that we currently have within the platform, um, looking at what we've got and how you can use those because there's many options within that menu, some of which people have never touched. So we're going to dive into more of those and how you can use those and what that may mean for your business. Um, and then on the 21st of December, right before Christmas, we've got a, a Q4 product update from our product team. They'll be running you through all the updates and the changes to the platform from quarter four this year. Uh, and then next year, we've got another webinar, which will be Smart Grids and Reporting. Again, this is a new one. So we're going to be diving more into the Smart Grids. Um, again, something that not many people know about and how they can be used. So we'll dive into those, uh, give you more um, of a use case for those. And uh, we'll also look at the reporting functions. So the report engine that's in the platform, and we will lightly touch on Report Writer. Uh, that's the 11th of January. Um, all of the signups are available now through our website and our training page. Um, if you want to sign up, the webinars are free. You just need to sign up to get the links. Um, Q4 product webinar is also free on the 21st of December if you're interested in that. And that is everything for today. Um, if you've got any questions, I will still be on for a few minutes and pop them in the Q&A box. Um, if you have any other questions or would like to go into more details on tasks, notes, dashboards, workflows, pop us an email on customer success at accessplanet.com. That's what's going to come through to all um, all the customer success team. Um, one of us will pick that up and get back to you and be able to book some time with you. Um, but yeah, hopefully see you on another webinar soon. If you've got any questions that you think of later, please do just drop us an email. Um, thanks for attending and have the great rest of your day.